Do I look wiped out? <laughs> All right, kids. It's 9.15 at night. I am not an evening person. This is like past my bedtime. I just got home with a two-hour review session with my kids. Apparently, they're awesome. The kids that are showing up are awesome. But I'm working harder than most of my own students. But whatever. In NK Infinity dot com. Whew. That's even hard to write. You thought my penmanship was bad before. This might be a rough one. All right, kids. I've already posted this document. If you go to here to NK Infinity, just click on New York State Teachers and click on Review. And then south near the bottom, hit click Final Week. That's what we're doing, Final Week. This is number three right here. This is the one we're doing right here. So, yeah. I don't know. I think I'm going to be able to make a document before four, but I'm not sure I've got it in me to make the video. I hope I do. Next thing I need to tell you, and I am going to apologize ahead of time, I have, this is outside of my control, but New York State came down either yesterday or today and said that we are not allowed to post anything online until June 30th. I know that's ridiculous, but that's the way it is. And please, 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 please. Don't email me and ask me to do it. I can't. I'll lose my job. Um, so June 30th, they will be up on June 30th, but that's the earliest I can do it. So I apologize in advance, but that's your New York State tax dollars at work. Uh, this way, I guess apparently they're allowing some kids to take the test over multiple days, which is a little dear, weird, but whatever. Not my rule. But uh, anyway, June 30th, let's get started. Uh, let me get my calculator all freshened up. All right. Gone, gone. Don't save that. All right. That's all from this morning. Okay. Let's get started. Hopefully, I'll have the energy to get most of this done. The mean time a student spends on their phone is 2.75 hours with a standard deviation of 18 minutes. Did you see it? Did you see it already? You should already have a highlighter out and say to yourself, that's hours, that's minutes. I'm not getting fooled. Okay? And this is hours as well. Hold on a second. I'm absolutely losing my mind. I feel like I've done this problem already three times. So my brain's not functioning, so there's probably going to be some errors in here. Hey, let me know. Let me know if I, if I screwed up something. Okay, kids? Here we go. Normal distribution curve. 2.75 hours. i got to convert that to minutes. So I'm going to go over to my calculator. 2.75 times, that's hours times 60 is minutes. You got 165 minutes. That's my average. I want to know how many, and my standard deviation is 18. I want to know how, how many spend more than 3.1 hours. So I got to come over to my calculator again 3.1 times 60. 186 minutes. How many are more than that? So this is back to the calculator on a normal CDF. So menu 552. Um, the bottom part is going to be 186. The top, in this case, is going to be infinity, so just put a buttload of nines in there. The mean was 165, I think, and our standard deviation was 18. So 0.1216, I'm going to guess, yeah, look at that. They're worried about your rounding. They're checking your rounding out, so 0.1216, rounded to the thousands place. There's the answer right there, choice two. This is not it. So let me make sure you understand that. It's choice two. It is 1.22. Round that to the thousands place. All right. This does not say secant equals negative two-fifths. That's not what it says. You don't believe me? Then why are you watching this video? No, I'm talking to you. Yeah, you right there. Yeah, yeah. No, no, not you, the guy behind you. Yeah, scared you, made you look up. This does not mean secant is negative two-fifths. What it says is cosine is negative. That's all it tells you, because I know a lot about cosine. Secant, not so much. Why? Because these are reciprocal function. This means positive. So what they're really saying is not nah, cosecant. It says sine is positive. Now, why do I say that? Because I'm pretty sure all teachers teach the same thing. All students take calculus or whatever else you want to put in there. Take crap. Take 
So all things are positive here. Sine is positive here. Tangent is positive here. And cosine is positive here. Now with cosine goes secant. With tangent goes cotangent. And with sine goes cosecant. But these are where things are positive. Okay? So I'm going to put stars everywhere things are positive. Or whatever. Cosine is negative. Cosine is Cosine is positive here and here, so it's negative here and here. Sine is positive. Sine is positive here because everything's positive here, and sine is positive here. The double star winner, chicken dinner, is number two. Given the following two events, Maverick scores 100% on the Algebra 2 Regions exam. Miss Arbori scores 100% on the Algebra 2 Regions exam. Got a little rivalry going between those two young kids. Got this, got that, got this. What's this? Okay, so I didn't say they were independent. I didn't say they were mutually exclusive. I didn't say an or. So because of that, and because I've got this given thing, I'm going to write down my dependence formula. And that is the probability of Maverick and Arbori is equal to the probability, blah, 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 of Maverick times the probability of Arbori. Now, if I was to stop right there, if I was just to stop right there, this would be the independence formula. Independent formula. But I'm not going to stop right there. I'm going to keep going. And then I'm going to write and or given, given Maverick. So this, I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to show you this is the independent formula, right? If you tag that little piece on, you become the dependent formula. So it's no longer in. It's now dependent. Dependent. Uh, but that's not what I'm looking for. So this is also equal to the probability of Arbori times the probability of Maverick. There is the independent formula given Arbori, and that's the dependent formula. So. Probability of Maverick and Arbori. So. so this is the one we want. Start plugging in numbers. In for this goes 0.34. In for the probability of Arbori, 0.85. And this is what I'm looking for. Probability of Maverick given Arbori. So divide by 0.85. And I get my answer. 0.35 divided by 0.85 equals 0.4117. What? Oh, it's 3 4. Gosh, I make a ton, ton of mistakes tonight. 0. 0.40. There it is. The winner. When I stay up at all hours of the night, like 9 30, I need my coffee. Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Nailed the commercial. I just made no money on that commercial. That was awesome. All right. Here we go. Let me highlight some important stuff. Independent. Independent. And this one right here. Or. Or. All right. So that's important. So the probability, as soon as I see an or, of M or N is equal to the probability of M plus the probability of N minus the probability of M and N. All right, just plug in all the pieces we know. Come over here, we're going like this. We know, we know the probability of S, S. Uh, I'm gonna guess we meant B or S here, kids. Yeah, that was my favorite freaking stupid thing. BS, you know, see, so get it? Probability of BS, probability of B and S. Sorry about that. Is equal to the probability of B plus the probability of S plus minus the probability of B and S. My goodness, what am I doing? I told you it's going to be a weird probability of B or S. Probability of bus. <laughs> probability of the bus. So that's what this should have said. This should have said the probability of B or S. So let's plug in all the pieces we know. Why do I still have a P here? Guys, it's going to be a long night. 
should be a B, actually. All right. What is the probability of S? There it is, 0.24. That's all you got. That's it. Well, that's sort of it. This thing right here, first of all, this thing said the probability of B or S. And as soon as you see that, you have to write this or formula. But this thing here is huge. Let's take a visit off to the side here. Let's go off to the side here and talk about this. When I tell you the probability, when I tell you they're independent, that means I'm telling you the probability of B is equal to the probability of B given S, guaranteed. If I tell you they're independent, the probability of S is equal to the probability of S given B. And one last thing I tell you when I tell you they're independent is the probability of B and S is equal to the probability of B times the probability of S. Those are three things that are absolutely true as soon as I tell you something is independent. So because of that, I know that the probability of B is 0.35. And the probability of B and S is going to be replaced with the probability of B times the probability of S, which is really just 0.24 times 0.35. So that's what we type in. 0.35 plus 0.24 minus 0.35 times 0 0.24. 0.506. Hopefully that's one of the answers. There it is, 0.506. All right, this does not mean G is less than zero. This means G is negative. H is positive. All right, that's important. All right, G is negative, H is positive. Okay, do you see this negative right here? The first thing that's going to tell me to do is do this. and change it to positive. Now, you got to remember that the denominator of a rational exponent is a root. Roots are in the ground. So this is really 1 over the 8th root of 5g squared. Now, I said g was negative. g is under the radical, and it's negative. If g is negative... Oh, this isn't a great question. I really should be taking out an I. This is a bad question. I was trying to write a cool question. I don't think I wrote this one very well. I really would like to take out an I, but none of these answers really make sense. So let's pretend like that one never happened. Sorry about that. Hey, everybody makes a mistake. All right, so this kind of a question, I would just type into my calculator. Quite honestly, I would just get it in there. What is it? 5 minus... Oh, it's got an M in it. I don't really know how to do that. Oh, wait, hold on. I could just do 2.36, control var M. Why 2.36? Who cares? Just pick any number. It doesn't make a difference. 5 minus, parenthesis, 5 minus MI, M I. Oh, shoot. Squared. Remember I said doesn't like my calc. I had to turn my mouse off because my mouse was causing me grief. Squared. And I get that. And I believe the answer is 3. So I'm going to try 3. Negative m squared minus 10mi. Or I can do it that way. Plus 25. Now, if it's right, it's going to be the exact same thing. There it is. No work at all. Now, come on. Let's do the work, right? Let's do it the right way. 5 minus mi squared. 5 minus mi squared. This is easily be a part two question. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times minus m is minus 5m minus 5, ooh, minus 5 mi, minus 5 mi. Now here comes the tricky part. Negative times negative is positive m squared i squared. And you need to remember that i squared is really 
just a negative one. So this thing just becomes negative m squared minus 10m i plus 25. There it is. That's why it's that answer. All right. Mr. George wanted to determine if the students at Hilton High School prefer Coke over Pepsi. He asked 100 students if they prefer Coke over Pepsi and recorded the data below. He repeated this process 200 times and found out the data is approximately normally distributed in graph below. Mr. Howell, a Coke drinker, did his own survey of 10 students in the same school and found that 53% of the students prefer Coke. Which of the following statements is not true based on Mr. George's survey? Well, let's see. Mr. George came up with a mean somewhere around here, correct? So which of the base is not true? Mr. Howell's result is not believable based on the data. Well, let's see where Mr. Howell's come up with. He came up with 0.53. Well, how many is that? That's 5 out of 200, which is 2.5%. So there's like a 2.5% chance of that happening. So I don't really think that's, I don't think it's his, his results are very believable. Mr. Howell's survey has too few participants to be credible. Probably true. Lots of variability when you have such a small number. Since 53% is represented in the above distribution, it is believable. So what they're saying is because 53 is on here, it's believable. Yeah, I don't know about that. There's a 95% that the true population mean. So I don't know what that is. So let's do 0.39 plus 2 times 0.06 and 0.39 minus 2 times 0.06. I'm going to do that in my calculator. Well, it's just plus 0.12 or 0.21, 0 0.12. So 0.12, so that's 0.51. And if I go down, that's going to be 0.27. So 0.27 to 0.51, that's true as well. Yeah, it's this one. Just because it's on there doesn't make it believable. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. It's just not very probable. So it's probably not going to happen. Out of 200 times, you would see something that high, 2.5% chance. That's not very probable. All right, so if H of M equals this and G of M equals this, which of the following is not true? All right, so the first thing I got to do is just add them up. So if I add those up, I get negative m squared plus m, and negative 3 and 9 make plus 6. That one's true. Now I got to subtract them. Now it's h minus m. Now the hard part about this one is it's 9 minus m squared minus m minus 3. So this is really 9 minus m squared minus m plus 3. So that should have a plus 12. So it's 12 minus m minus m squared. So that one's true. Now i got to multiply them. So I'm going to put them in parentheses and multiply them. Let's see how that works. 9 minus m squared times m minus 3. Let's see, that's 9m minus 27. minus m cubed plus 3m squared. All right, looks like the big one is the last one. Let's see, we're going to divide g divided by h. So m minus 3 divided by 9 minus m squared. All right, let's see what we got here. So this is really m minus 3 divided by 3 minus m times 3 plus m. So these cancel, but when they cancel, don't they make the negative 1? So it should be negative 1 over 3m. So this is the one that's not true. The formula below can be used to model which scenario? 
So since we're multiplying by a number bigger than 1, that means we've got growth. So we're taking this 50 and we're growing it by, looks like 20%. So the first row of Hilton's new auditorium has 50 seats and each row has 20 extra seats. Each row afterwards, this one has 20 extra seats. Now, that, doesn't even, that doesn't even make any sense. Plus, it's not adding, you're multiplying. The last row of a stadium is 50 seats and each row before. That doesn't even make any sense. Mr. Devos deposited $50 into the bank account and is earning 20% interest. That looks pretty good. An investment of $50 in mutual funds is losing. Nah, it's not losing. It's growing. Right? We got growth. So here we go. Three again. All right. So anyway, um, we... We could try doing completing the square there, but the first step in completing the square would be to divide by 3. That's not going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this the right way, and then I'm going to show you how you could check your answer, a.k.a. you could have done this at the beginning, but you need to know how to do this. So A equals, B equals, C equals, and D equals. Now D stands for discriminant, which is B squared minus 4AC. A is just 3, B is negative 8, and C is 10. By the way, I, I hate to say this, and I'm sorry that I haven't responded to a lot of your emails and your messages and comments. You know, I'm getting like 100 and 150 a day, and it's taking me 5 or 6 hours just to write these things up. I just don't have time. Uh, I, I'm not getting to all, all the work I have to get to, let alone trying to get all this stuff done. So I apologize if I'm not responding. I get, you know, people kind of get mad at me for not responding. But, man, it's just one person, kids, and I'm really busy. So I'm working. Uh, the formula sheet will have the quadratic formula on it for you. It's right here. The only thing I don't like is I don't like the fact that they put it all over 2A. I like to put each piece over 2A. I kind of like to just break that out. So you'll see. I'll write it a different way. I'll write it as x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Oh, I haven't even done this work yet. So don't type negative 8 into your calculator. If you were to type negative 8 into your calculator and square it, it's going to tell you it's negative 64. It is not. Eight, negative 8 squared is positive 64. Minus 4 times 3 times 10. Now get that in your calculator. 64 minus 4 times 3 times 10. Negative 56. Now since it's negative, I know i is going to be the answer. So these two don't make any sense. So I get x equals negative b is 8. And you can actually stop there. Because see how that one's got a negative 4 and this one's got a positive 8? That's not it. So this is the answer. But let's finish it up anyway. Negative 8 over 2 times 3, which is 6 plus or minus 6, the square root of negative 56. Now, because I need to have it in simplest radical form, I tend to take the square root of negative 56, bring it over here. Probably just 4 goes into it. Negative 4 times 14, I believe. Yep. So, what is the square root of negative 4? 2i. So this becomes x equals, this is really, 2i square root of 14. So it becomes x equals 4 thirds plus or minus this, ooh, whoa, 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 plus or minus. Now this 2 goes into 6 3 times. So i square root of 14 over 3. So there's my answer. Hopefully that's choice 1. It is. Now what I'm going to show you is what you could have done to begin with to avoid all of this. Now. Would I want you to do this? No, and I'm hoping you kind of don't do it, but I can't really stop you. So, I might as well show you how to do it. If you can't beat them, join them, right? Four over three. Now, you got to pick one, so we'll just pick plus. And it's i square root of 14 all over three. And we're going to store this into x. Whatever. And then we're going to type the original problem in. 3x squared minus 8x plus 10. Oh, 
It actually came out to be zero. That's pretty cool. A lot of times it won't come out to be zero. I didn't expect that. Zero. There it is. And if you try the other one, it'll be right too. All right, which expression is equivalent to? So what are they asking you to do? They're asking you to do some long division. So we have some long division here. Now, what I want you to notice, and I'm going to zoom in on it if I can. No, I can't. I don't have my mouse with me. So I want you to take a look at this right here. Take a look. What's missing? Do you see what's missing on that? I hope you see that the squared term is missing. If it's missing, you have to. To put it in. You can't have a missing term. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide 2x minus 3, divide it into 8x cubed minus 40x. Oh, wait a second. We forgot the squared term. I just did it. Now, in order to put it in, you just put in 0x squared minus 40x plus 5. All right. Now, let's do this. 2x times 4x squared is 8x cubed. 4x times negative 3 is negative 12x squared. Subtract, add 12x squared minus 40x. 2x times positive 6x is 12x squared minus 18x minus plus. And this is what? Negative 22x plus 5. Now we're going to multiply by, it looks like 11. So, man, this doesn't look like it's going to be the right answer. So minus 11. 11 times 22 is negative 22x. 11 times 3 is positive 33. We're going to subtract, subtract, and I get negative 28 which is not one of the answers. But I have a little bit of an issue because these answers appear to be exactly the same. So I'm hoping that on yours, we fixed it, or I fixed it. So I'm going to guess I might be right. I might be right. My <laughs> God, I hope I'm right because these aren't right. So let's see. Here's another way to do this. Watch this. So you go to your calculator. And I'm going to check it, 2.358, control, var, x, press enter. Now I'm going to type in the original problem, control, division, 8x cubed. Get out of cube mode. Don't forget the 8. Minus 40x plus 5 all over 2x minus 3. Now, I think this one should say minus 28. Now, I may be wrong, but I think it should say minus 28. So, I'm going to say this one should be the answer with the minus 28. So, I'm going to type in what's there. 4x squared plus 6x minus 11 minus, control division, 28 over... 2x minus 3. There it is. Notice they're the same. Since they're the same, that's the answer. So I'm going to have to fix that. I'm going to do it right now. All right, kids. Keyword here is, well, they didn't give you the keyword. They just showed you the inverse. So this is another way to say, I'm giving you the inverse. I want you to find the original. It doesn't matter. You're trying to find the inverse of the inverse. The inverse of the inverse is the function. So we're really just trying to find the inverse of the inverse of the function. So we want to find the inverse of this. So let's just call that y equals log 1 half to the x. Now the first rule for inverses is you switch x and y. So I get x equals log base 1 half of y. Why? Because you got to know the answer. That's a dumb question. Gosh, you kids. So it's all about that base. All about that base. So you're going to write 1 half. These two things are going to switch sides. So 1 half to the x is equal to y. Or in other words, f of x is equal to 1 half to the x. A circle centered at the origin has a radius of 17 centimeters. The terminal side of angle theta intercepts the circle in quadrant 4.
at point K. At point K. That's point K. So it's a 17 centimeter. It said the the X value of point K is 15. So make a right triangle. So this has to be 15, right? So I come out 15 and I go down some amount. So if I do 15 squared plus X squared equals 289, excuse me, sorry, I don't want to jump ahead, equals 17 squared. If you solve this, you end up getting X equals 8. All right, so X is equal to 8. So there's 8. So the question says, what is the cosecant? Ah, I don't know anything about cosecant. Let's see. Let's find sine. Sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is 8 over hypotenuse, which is oh, is uh, 17. But wait a second. Aren't we down in this quadrant? Shouldn't this be negative since I went down? I know it's not a, ne a it's not a length of negative, but it's going down, so it's got a negative direction. So sine is really negative eight over seventeen, but cosecant is the reciprocal of that. So cosecant would be negative seventeen over eight. Oh, this question. I wonder why they asked this one. This was asked a couple of times. I don't like this question. Hmm. So what they did was they grouped these two together and they took out a 4 and you're left with x minus 6, x squared minus 6x plus 4y squared minus plus 8y equals 60. I wonder if there's a better way to do this problem. But anyway, so we're going to do completing the square. It's probably a better way to do this problem. I'm going to come up with one. Plus square here. Plus 4y squared plus 8y plus square here equals 60 plus square plus square. Now, there's a hard part about this problem. The parentheses are easy. It's x minus 3 squared. Now, that should come as no surprise plus y plus 4 squared. But what goes in this parenthesis, what goes in this box is 9. But what I actually added was 36. And what goes in here is 16, but what I actually added was 64. So 64 plus 36 is 160. So there's the answer right there. Hmm. But there's an easier way to do that problem. Last year, Google stock rose a staggering 9.5% over the previous years. Miss McGillagilligilla is going to you to have is going to have hundreds of thousands of shares of stocks available to her at the end of January at which time she can sell them and collect the money. Which equation can be used to determine the approximate monthly increase? It said let m equal the number of months. Is that right? I want monthly increase. Is m the number of months? Yeah, I guess m's. Because if I had 12 months, 12 divided by 12 would be just one month. That would be one year. I hate these questions. Anyway, it's growth of 1.9%. So you want about 1.095%. And it would be m to the divided by 12. Is that one of the answers? Well, I got 12 divided by m. That's not it. And that's not it. And here's where they trick you on this problem. So what they decide to do is 1.095. They, they, they really give you the 1 12th to the m, and they put this 1 12th on the inside. So 1.095 to the 1 12th power is really 1.0076 to the m. I hate that question. All right, so this question, so this question, oh, what happened? This question is going to require the use of a calculator. There's really no way to algebraically solve this one. I mean, I could plug, plug these numbers in and see which one works, but even that would be a pain in the neck. So I'm just going to graph them. 
So one third to the x. So parenthesis one divided by three parenthesis raised to the x. Should be a nice exponential decay problem. Is that all there is? Oh, minus two. Forgot the minus two. Minus two. So that should go down. Okay. And then press tab. And the other one is absolute value. Now remember, the absolute values are right here. You click on this. Oops, what the heck. Absolute value. And there it is right there. Not going to let me. There it is. Then you absolute value of 2x minus 3. Minus 3. Press enter. Wow, I got three points of intersection. I feel like I didn't write this one right. So menu, analyze graph, intersection, click, click. Is negative, now we're looking for an X, right? So it's negative, uh, that, that looks like it could be, possibly be an answer. Menu, analyze graph, intersection, click, click, 0.79. Negative 0.78, negative 7. No, that's not it. Menu, analyze graph, intersection, click, click, 2.05 or 2.1. Nope. So it looks like that's the winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. The chart below shows the results of an ice cream survey. Ooh, I love ice cream. If a person is chosen at random, what is the probability that the person is a teenager given? Wow, as soon as we do given, I'm taking out my pen and starting to cross stuff off. Given they like vanilla. So because they like vanilla, I can't look at chocolate, and I can't look at neither. I don't look at any of that stuff. What is the probability... Now, the one thing I should have done before I did any of this is total it up. But since I don't care about chocolate and I don't care about neither, all I care about is vanilla. Vanilla is now my new universe. So I need to know how many vanillas there are. So 54 and 16 is 70, 92. That's it. Got to be the answer. Because there are 16 teenagers that like that. 16 over 92. Done. Miss Antonini is trying to increase her lap swimming endurance. She has heard from the great coach Sadowski that increasing one's lap by 8% per week is optimal and has a high percentage of success. If Miss Antonini currently can swim 200 laps, which of the following equations below would tell how many laps total she will eventually swim during her 10-week training schedule? So because it is an 8% growth, that is a geometric series of numbers. Geometric. We're multiplying by 8%. So we're taking the 200 and we're growing by 8%. So we're going to multiply by 1.08 to the n minus 1. Now that would just be to generate the sequence. If I wanted to add them up, i got to use a summation. So it looks like this is the right answer. Looks like it. Now, these ones come from this formula sheet right here. They come from this formula sheet right here. You see it? So, let's see how that would look. If I was going to use that formula sheet, it would look something like this. 200 minus 200. Now, the R value, this R value, is growth factor. So, i got to grow it keep doing that, 1.08 to the n all over 1 minus 1.08. So this one's close. What is 1 minus 1.08? I got to do that. Um, 1 minus 1.08, 0, oh, that's 0 0.08, so that's not it. So if this, if this had said 0 0.08, that would have been the right answer, but neither one of these work. So there it is, choice one. All right, so this one's a little, this one's can be done two different ways, it's two different ways. So Ms. Reyes is running for office, and she asked her friends to survey 250 students and 78% of them said they would vote for her. 
Her well-trained stra- staff then conducted a simulation of a thousand more polls of 250 voters. Why anybody would do this, I have no idea. Assuming that 78% of these students would vote for her, they were in a simulation. The output of the survey is graphed below. Given this output and assuming a 95% level of confidence, the margin of error for this poll is closest to. So I yesterday in day two review, I didn't give you the graph. I did not give you the graph. I'm giving you the graph now. Okay, so let's take a look at this graph. 95% level of confidence. Let's say my margin of error was, so remember, um, margin of error is defined as Z star or just Z times my standard deviation, correct? So because it's 95%, it's two times my standard deviation. That's my margin of error, two times. So I want to go out two standard. So these, these numbers over here represent two standard deviations, really, to the left and to the right. So if I went 0.03 to the right and 0.03 to the left, would I have 95% of the data? Is that 95% of the data right there? I don't think so. If I went 0.05, oh no, this is tough. If I went 0.05 to the right, that would be right here to here. Yeah, that's pretty close. And if I went 0.06, that would be here a little bit more. So it's definitely one of these two. So if you had to guess, you'd have to guess one of those two. I was not very nice on that one. I apologize. You're really not going to be able to do it with the graph. Uh, I think they make it, if they did it that way, they'd make it a little bit easier. The only other way to do it is to figure out what the standard deviation is. Now, you have to know that the standard deviation for a proportion is the square root of P times 1 minus P over N. Well, P is 0.78, so equals square root of 0.78 times 1 minus 0.78. Over, now, how many people did we ask? We asked 250 people. So I got to figure out what that is. So the square root of fraction of 0.78 times 0.22, which is 1 minus all over 250. 0.026. And then I'm going to multiply by 2. 0.052. So that would be closest to 0 0.05. And that would be my margin of error. Sorry, kids, that was ugly, I know. Oh my goodness, this even odd function stuff. All right, kids, odd functions are symmetric with the origin. Or in other words, they have rotational symmetry. Even functions are symmetric with the y-axis. So if I was to graph these, if I was to graph these, and I didn't, oh, I did mean that. So let me go over and graph these. Uh, on, graph, graph. I'm going to graph sine x. Sine, oh, this thing does not like me sine x. Is that symmetric with the x axis, the y axis, right? Does this point have a reflection over here? No, that's not it. Tab. How about cosine x? Ah, now that looks like it's a, like the, the y axis is a mirror. That looks pretty good. Tab. Let's try another one. Well, x minus 3 squared, so parenthesis, oops, parenthesis, x minus 3, parenthesis, squared, and I think I had minus 2, right? That's not, that's not. I press tab, oops, press tab, and we'll go cube. Nope, that's not. So there it is, right there. There is your even function.
Sorry, kids. I know this is an even degreed function, but it's not an even function. This is the trick over here. It's got to be symmetric with the y-axis. And I blame all three of us on that one. We screwed this up. All right, kids. This one's tough. Angelique. Angelique and Brianna want to open a car. Was company. Oh, <laughs> man. A car wash company. I don't even know what the heck I'm writing. Angelique can... <laughs> Angelique can wash a car. What am I doing? A car in A minutes. Brianna can... How can that possibly be... I didn't put an H on any of these washes. Wash a car in B minutes. If they work together... Hey, hey, hey they can wash their car in X minutes. The following equation can be used to calculate the time it would take them to complete the job together. So... This is an obnoxious, 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 but rather simple question. Doesn't look simple, but it is. We need to get A all by itself. Solve the following for Angelique. So we need to get A all by itself. So let's do this. First thing I'm going to do is move this over there. So x over a is equal to, excuse me, 1 minus x over b. Now, if I'm going to combine these things, don't they need to have a common denominator? So my common denominator would be b, right? So x over a would equal b over b minus x over b, right? Didn't that 1 just really that? Sure. So x over a is really equal to b minus x over b. Don't you dare cancel those b's. Well, can't I just flip these? I mean, I could do a whole bunch of crazy stuff with cross multiplying, but can't I just take both sides and flip them? For example, if I add 2 thirds is equal to 2 thirds, and I flipped them, I would have 3 halves. God bless it. Three halves is equal to three halves. Doesn't matter, right? So that's what I'm going to do. A over X is equal to B minus X over B. Oh, B, I didn't flip the other side. B over B minus X. Well, how do I get rid of this X on this side? Well, I just multiply this side by X. And then I'm going to multiply this side by X. So these cancel, and I end up with A equals BX over B minus X. That was fun. Miss Skinner took a turn for the worse after high school. She started working for a loan sharking company as their muscle. <laughs> if you know Miss Skinner, you know this is not true. She, she would probably nice you to death. What the owner slash mob boss did not know is she was pretty good at math. She's actually really good at math. Miss Skinner informed her boss that to make some real money, they should try to make the loan so complicated that the average person just simply couldn't understand it. They decided they would charge 28% interest compounded every 15 days. If Mr. Kelsey takes a $500 loan out from Miss Skinner, how much would, she, would he owe at the end of one calendar year? So, we're going to start out with 500. The money is growing at 20%, 28%. So, that's 1.28. So, any of these that don't have 1.28 have to go. So, now we're down to a 50-50 guess. Now, just like with a half-life program, half-life problem, just like with a doubling problem, just like with a tripling problem, a half-life, a percentage increase, the every word is important. It's it's growing 28% every 15 days. So when you create your exponent, the denominator is always going to be your every. Every 10 days, every 10 hours, every 5 minutes, whatever it is. And this comes up a lot in half-lives. So for one year, it would be 365 over 15. And there it is. And by the way, if you figured out how much money that would be, it's a crap load of money. 
All right. I think I have to break. Oh, 15 minutes. I hope my vo- Oh, I'm still going. Oh, my God. I don't to hit return. I hope my voice doesn't sound like a uh, karate movie from, like, the 70s. All righty. Let's do some imaginary numbers. It's like my sleep I've been getting lately. I've been getting a lot of imaginary sleep. <laughs> Dude, seriously, I'm not going to lie. I'm with you guys on this one. I'm not going to, I'm not pulling any punches. I know exactly what you guys are going through. I know you guys think us teachers, we just start assigning crazy stuff and do all the stuff. Most of you appreciate and understand I'm killing myself to get this work out to you. Killing myself. It's 10, 10 at night. That's like two hours past my bedtime. What am I going to like? Look at me. I'm bald and old. I go to bed early. So on Friday at three o'clock, when I pick up my last test, and I'm going to probably have 15 of them to pick up because I know I got like 15 or 20 kids I know are going to shoot for that 100. When I pick up that last test, I think I might just cry because I'm going to be so excited it's over. And then this weekend, I get to write my speech for graduation. So I got a lot to do, but at least I get to enjoy 3 o'clock. I'm not going to be doing anything else. And I wish I could report the video for you guys, but I can't. So let's do this problem. I only got a few left. Then I can go to bed. All right. So I don't want you to think that I'm being mean to you, but if you're a tool that thinks you're going to be distributing that before you take care of that, you got other things coming, bro. We got to take care of the squared first, then the distributing, okay? Because multiplication does not come before exponents. So let's do this. So the 3di comes in later. We got to double distribute or foil this thing out. d minus 5i, d minus 5i. So we're going to double distribute that out. So 3di times this crap, d squared minus. Now this is minus 5di, minus 5di is minus 10di. I, and then minus 5i times minus 5i is positive 25i squared. Now, don't you dare distribute yet. You should clean this crap up. Make it a little bit simpler. You all know that this is really just negative 1, so this becomes a negative. So let's, let's write it right. 3di times d squared minus 10di minus 25. Now we distribute 3d cubed i minus 30d squared i squared minus 75d i. Yeah, this is a pain in that question because I'm still not done. Man, this is really negative 1, so it's going to make that positive. So my answer looks like 3d cubed i plus 30d squared minus 75di. Now, this would be one of those questions that you say, when am I ever going to use that in my life? To pass the test. So, I would highly, highly, Oh my God, I hit that note. I have been trying to hit none. So I would highly recommend you check your bloody work. Because if you did this problem, it probably took you so long, your pen hurts. I don't know what I'm saying. Dude, seriously, I need to go to bed. So I'm going to take 2.458 and I'm going to store it into D. And I'm going to put enter. Now pick any number you want. Just don't pick normal numbers. Don't pick three. Don't pick four. Don't pick two. For heaven's sake, don't pick one or zero. Pick a number that's weird. And I'm going to type the original answer in. Three times D times I. Anytime you put the letters next to each other, make sure you put times symbols in there. I'm going to hit times here too because sometimes it doesn't like that. Uh, D minus D minus Five. There's an easy chance I could have made a mistake on this one, by the way. Lots of stuff going on in my head, like... Enter. Holy crap! All right, let's hope our answer looks like that. So 3d cubed i 
So 3D cubed, get out of cube mode, times I plus 30D squared plus 30D squared minus 75di minus 75d times now i'm crossing my fingers as soon as i hit that i get that same crazy ass answer right there yes that's the feeling you should get on the test when you do something like that and you're like yeah and then a whole lot of f words should come in your house i fractioning kick that fracturing Fun thing, you know what I'm saying. One of that. Once you're done with that, you start that baby, and you're done with it. You never have to look at it again. There's the right answer, and then you go to this one. And you're like, oh, fraction that problem, man. Oh my god, I'm so excited to see it. Anyway, all right, this one's not too bad. We're gonna store eight into x here. We're gonna put eight in for x, and everybody doesn't like the fact there's an a here. Who cares? Play around with it. We're doing f of eight is equal to negative 1 over 2 times 8, 5 over 3a, square roots of negative 1 minus 8 squared. Now, i got to clean all of this stuff up inside the parentheses before I can do the squared. That's the rules. That's the order of operations. So, come over here. f of 8 is equal to, now this is just negative 4. But I'm going to clean this up. 5 over 3a square roots of negative 9. Now what, oh, squared. What is the square root of negative 9? 3i. So now what I have is negative 4, 5 over 3a times 3i squared. Well, okay, we're not quite done. This 3 cancels with this 3. So that leaves me negative 4 times 5ai squared. Whew! I've cleaned up on the inside. Now I got to distribute that squared. So everybody gets the squared. So negative 4 times tw 5 squared is 25a squared i squared. Crap! There's another i squared. i squared is negative 1. Let's put that right there. So what I end up with was 100 a squared. Are you freaking kidding me? You want to star this one. Let's star this, baby. Let's check this out. This is going to be one of those other ones where you go, yes, I got it right. Because who knows? I might have messed it up. So I'm going to put it, we're going to stow 8 in for x. Now, you don't have a choice for x. You have to stow 8 in for x. So don't go crazy on this one. Store 8 in for x, and then I'm going to store 2, nah, you know what, I'm tired of 2. Let's go 3.15 in for a. Got to store something in. Ah, control var a, enter. All right, 3.15, okay. So, now I'm going to type the original in. Negative 1 half, negative 1 divided by 2, parenthesis, X. I don't know why. Wait, hold on, hold on. Let's do it the right way. Control division. Negative 1 over, I'm going to put it in exactly as I see it. Negative 1 over 2. X. Parenthesis. This might actually crash. Control division. 5 over 3. I think it's going to crash. A. Square roots of negative 1 minus x. I think it's going to crash right on that. Oops. Doesn't like when I put in neg negative a minus x. I think we're going to crash here, kids. May not work. Yeah. Doesn't like that. Sorry. It doesn't like the fact I'm taking the square root of negative. So that one, sorry. There's no way to test that one. I thought we could. All right. What do we got? Just a couple left, right? 25, a little couple graphs, and a badass question left. Whew, we're almost done. All right, get the weird thing alone. We're going to bring this 3x over. So square root of 3x squared plus 2x minus 12 equals 3x minus 10. 
we're going to square both sides. Square both sides. So I get 3x squared plus 2x minus 12 equals. Now this means we're going to double distribute, right? So careful with that. That's 9x squared minus 30 minus 30 is minus 60x plus 100. Now this is my highest degree squared, so everything's going to that side. 0 is equal to 6x squared because we're going to subtract the 3x. Subtract the 2x, I get minus 62x, and then add the 12, so I get plus 112. I have a GCF, so I'll take that out. 2x, excuse me, 3x squared minus 31x plus 56. Factoring is not too bad. You can use menu 331 if you want. I think this is plus 8. And, nope, excuse me, minus 8. And minus 7. Negative 24 and 7 make negative 31. So my two answer, x equals 7 thirds and x equals 8. But you must check your answers, chillin'. Right, I already got 8 stored into x, so let's do that one right here. I got already 8 stored in. So 3x squared, square root, 3x squared, plus 2x minus 12, plus 2x minus 12, outside, minus 3x. Negative 10, there it is, negative 10. 8 works, ka-ching, let's try 7 thirds. So 7 divided by 3, control var x. And we'll do the same thing. Normally only one works. And that's true here. My answer is only eight. Don't be a tool and not check your answer, chillin'. All right, some graphing. And I've done trig graphing every day so far. That looks bad to me. Let me see something real quick. Hmm, I wonder why that... that box got there. That's weird. All right. So, uh, we'll see what we got. We got an amplitude of 2. We got a period of 3 pi. As soon as I get period, I'm going to go for scale. X scale is equal to 3 pi over 4 because we need 4 points and that's it. That's it. That's all I got to do. My midline is Y equals 3. Pretty much ready to graph. And I got to go through this point. Let me write this point down here. 3 pi over 4 comma 5. That looks weird. I'm not really sure. And I'm going from negative 3 pi to 3 pi. So that means I got to go, I got to put my y-axis in the middle, correct? So let me try to do that. I'm terrible at this. All right, there we go. Whew. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to do our scales. So I'm just going to put a 2 here, maybe in a negative 2 down here. I don't really need that. And then I'm going to go every 1, 2, 3, 4. It doesn't matter how many boxes you pick. For some reason, I always pick 3. It makes no difference. We're just going to count by 3 pi over 4. So 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4 is... 6 pi over 4, which is really 3 pi over 2. And then 3 pi over and 3 pi over and 3 pi over is 9 pi over 4. And then 3 pi, that would be 12 pi over 4, which is really 3 pi. And that's what we want. Don't forget, when we get to that fourth tick mark, we want to be at our period. All right, now we're going to graph our midline, y equals 3. Remember, this is not part of the graph, so it's a dotted line. All right, so let's see what we got. This is a sine curve, correct? All right, so a sine curve begins at a zero, it ends at a zero, and it's got a zero in the middle. 
Now, in between those are maxes and mins. But they told us we got to plot this point. So I got to find that point. 3 pi over 4, 5. Is my amplitude 2? Thank goodness my amplitude is 2. So that means that one's going to be down there. So that means here's my graph. Now I got to go the other way too. So start at a 0. Wait. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Start at a 0. Oop, let me get my, my fat black pen. There it is. End of the 0. 0 in the middle. And we're going to go this way and this way. There it is, chillin. Now let's do this funky one. Funky. So A is 3. Don't put the negative with it. B is 1 pi, 1 over 6 pi. Right then and there, we're ready for period. Remember, the formula for period is 2 pi over B, which is 2 pi over 1 over 6 pi. Now, these pi's cancel, so I really have 2 divided by 1 6, but dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so I'm going to multiply by 6 over 1, which is just 12. Now I go to x scale. Now remember, x scale is always period over 4, because we need 4 tick marks to get our scale right, or to get our graph right. So this is going to be 12 over 4, or 3. And our midline is going to be y equals 7. So we're really pushing this graph up. And it said two cycles. So I'm going to put my x-axis over here. And because I, I'm taking this whole graph and I'm moving it up 7, I'm really going to put my x-axis way down here at the bottom. That's pretty good. Let's get my scale on there. My scale is, you know, 2, negative 2. It just means every box is 1. So, 1, 2, 3. That's 3. 1, 2, 3, 6. 1, 2, 3, 9. 1, 2, 3, 12. So when I get to 12, I should be finished with this curve. All right. So now we've got to get our midline in there. So let's get that midline in. 2, 4, 6, here's 7. There's 7. Okay, so cosine curves start at a max, end at a max, and then the min is in between them, or it starts at a min, ends at a min, with a max in the middle. So that's what we got to decide. Because this is negative, we are going to start at a min. So I got to go down three from the midline. One, two, three. It's going to end at a min. In the middle here at six, we're going to have a max. We're going to go up three. In between those, halfway in between, we're going to have zeros. Okay, so we do that three times. One, two, three, four. Start at a min, end at a min. Max in the middle. In between those are zeros. And there's the curve, kids. There she goes. Final question. Final question of the night. Hey, look. I might get to bed before midnight. Anyway, Mr. Schur's parents told him that when he graduates from college, they're going to give him $20,000. Why do I keep writing questions like this? I'm making you guys all, like, excited. He has two financials to, uh, assuring him that... I always pick on Mr. Smith and Mr. Smith and Smith, whatever. He has two financial planners assuring him that they have the best plan. Mr. Smith's plan will earn him 3.95%, compounded annually. Mrs. Harris... Oh, Smith. Never mind. Mrs. Harris' plan will earn him 4.5% compounded monthly. 
So we've got monthly and we've got annually. So we got to write two formulas. We're going to do S of N. So that is, what the heck am I writing? S sub N, that's Smith, is going to be equal to, what are we starting with? $20,000. His is compounded annually, so we're just going to do 1 plus 0 0.0395 to the N. That was straightforward. Annually is easy. Compounding is not. So now we're going to do Harris, H of N, is equals to start at 20,000, 1 plus. Plus. Now, because it's compounded monthly, you got to take the interest rate and divide by 12. So 0 0.0405 over 12 to the 12N. Remember, if you compound, these two have to match. So if it was compounded quarterly, they would be 4. If it compounded semi-annually, it would be 2. If it compounded annually, it's really a 1. Really, there's a divide by 1 and a 1 here, but you don't need to put those there. Mr. Sure will graduate from college when he is 23 and wants to retire when he turns 55. So that looks like he's going to be working for 32 years. So we got to figure out how much money he's going to have in 32. So S of 32 is equal to 20,000, 1 plus 0 0.0395 to the 32. And Harris of 32 is equal to 20,000, 1 plus 0 0.0405 over 12 to the 12 times 32. Whew. Let's do this. Now, now, now. So 20,000, 1 plus 0 0.0395, parenthesis, raised to the 32. $69,089 and 78 cents. Don't round wrong. Didn't tell you what to round, so you round the money. Let's do it again, 20000 Parenthesis, one plus. So now we got to do division, right? 0 0.0405. 12 raised to the 12 times 32 72,900 dollars $72, and 65 cents which plan will maximize profit and by how much so Harris plan maximizes profit By, I don't type these in. I just do the three thousand, three thousand eight hundred forty-three dollars and eighty-eight cents. He would like to have a balance of minimally a hundred thousand dollars. So we want to end with a hundred thousand dollars. It's equal to the $20,000 starting, 1 plus 0 0.0405 over 12. Wait, why am I using this one? Because this is the one that will make him work the least amount of money, right? This is the one that's going to make him the most. We just don't know what N is. So we don't know how long he's got to work for. So we're going to divide by 20,000. And you get 5 equals 1 plus 0 0.0405 over 12 to the 12n. Now what? Well, we have a exponential. In order to solve an exponential, you have to do log. So log of base 1 plus 0 0.0405 over 12. Remember, these two things switch. Of 5 is equal to 12n. So divide by 12, divide by 12, and I should have the number of years I want. So, log 
one plus oops one plus control division point oh four oh five over twelve of five enter and divide by twelve. So 38, 39.806. So n equals 39.806. So what's the heck does it ask? How many more years, rounded to the nearest year, will he have to work? Well, he had to work 32. Now to make it to here, we got to work till it looks like we're almost 40 years. So the answer here would be 8 more years for a total of 40 years. Or you can just say eight more years. Day three is done. I haven't even started writing day four. So hopefully it'll get soon. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Leave me a nice comment, and please don't bug me about making the videos for Friday's test. I am not allowed to do it. It will be up on June 30th, right in the morning. I'll probably make them on June 29th, leave them on my computer at home, and then pop them up on YouTube on the 30th when it's legal. Okay, but that's the, the rules I got to follow. I hate it. I can't even talk to you about it. Don't email me. Don't ask me questions about it. I'm not allowed. All right? And I don't like it, but I got to follow the rules. Those are the rules. All right, kids. Catch you all on the flip side. Goodbye. Bye.